Okay, let's talk about configuring VLANs, access ports, ports and trunk lines. Now here is a little sample network that we're going to use. We have a couple of switches and uh, six PCs and we're ultimately going to hook these three PCs up to this switch and go ahead, I didn't mean to click on you, and these three PCs up to this switch. Now our top PCs are going to be in VLAN 1, our bottom PCs are going to be in VLAN 2, our middle PCs, our bottom PCs are going to be in VLAN 3. And over here you'll see, well, VLAN 10, 20, 30, the IP address range, and the ports that we're planning on assigning. All right, now before we dive into the configuration, remember that with the whole idea of VLANs, VLANs is a big aspect in network security, the whole idea of VLANs is we, uh, devices within a VLAN can communicate with each other if they're on the same switch. Devices in different VLANs can't communicate with each other even though they are on the same switch. So when I put somebody in a VLAN, it isolates them to that particular VLAN. And the only way they can get out of that VLAN is to go through a Layer 3 device and route outside of that VLAN. Because a Layer 2 switch itself won't get you outside of that VLAN. We'll talk about inner VLAN routing in another video. So, let's start by configuring our VLANs. They're going to be VLAN 10, 20, and 30. And so I'm going to open up switch 1, and I've got a really basic configuration on this switch right now. So really, the only things on here are passwords and hostname. So I'm going to log in and go to privilege exec mode. All right, config T takes me into global config mode. Now to create my VLAN is basically one command. I just declare it, VLAN 10. And that creates a VLAN for me named VLAN 10. Now notice it puts me in VLAN configuration mode here. Well, the primary thing that I'm gonna do in VLAN configuration mode is I'm gonna name my VLAN. That way I actually know what it is and so it's just not VLAN 10 20 30 the name which isn't used by the switch the switch really only cares about the ID number but the name is gonna help me remember which is which so I'm gonna set this one's name to staff and then I'm create a new VLAN VLAN 20 I'm gonna name that management and then I'm gonna create a new VLAN VLAN 30 and I'm gonna name it guest. So that gives me three VLANs and my uh, names for them. So I'm going to end out and if you do a show run you're actually not going to see your VLAN configuration and that's because VLAN configuration isn't stored in the running config or the startup config. It's stored in another file on the flash uh, file system called VLAN.dat but I can do show VLAN and it will show me my VLANs. And for a simplified version of it, which is what I normally do, I can do show VLAN brief or SHVLBR for short. Now this is gonna give me my VLAN IDs. So one was automatically created, that's my default VLAN. And by default, all ports on my switch are part of VLAN 1. Now I've created VLAN 10, 20, 30 and given them their appropriate names. I also have these four VLANs that are created by default. FDDI default, token ring default, FDDI net. Uh, we don't actually use these very often. They're just kind of there. Most of the time you're not going to touch those. You can't make them go away, however. All right, so this has created my VLANs for me. Now, in order for the VLANs to be functional, I have to take switch ports and I have to assign switch ports to my different VLANs. Now, I'm going to do that in the port interface. So I'm going to go back to config T. And if you remember from our little documentation here, very important to document what you're going to do before you actually do it so you have a working plan, F1 through 8 are going to go into VLAN 10. So, let me go back to my switch configuration, and I'm going to go into interface range. Now, remember we talked about this with switch port security. If I do interface range, I can do a whole group of interfaces at the same time. So, I'm going to do interface range F0, 1 through 8. Now, before I can put in a VLAN, I have to make it an access port. Now, Cisco switches will support devices as trunk ports, access ports, or using uh, dynamic port assignments. So it's switch port mode, and then you'll see we have access, dynamic, and trunk. 
by default, all of the ports on a Cisco switch are dynamic, which means they will automatically negotiate access or trunk line. And you've got two options, are dynamic desirable and dynamic auto. Dynamic auto says, if the other end of this line wants to be a trunk port, I'll be a trunk port, otherwise I won't be. Dynamic desirable says, I want to be a trunk port, but if the other end won't, then we'll be okay without it. Switch port access says, no, you're going to be an access port no matter what. And access ports are what we use when we connect to end devices. Uh, and before we can put something into a VLAN, we need to put it into, or we need to make it an access port. A trunk port, we'll talk about in a little bit, so we'll hold off on that one. So let's go switch port mode, access, and that will force all of these to be access ports. And then once I have switch port mode access, it's switch port access. I had to stop and think for a minute because I had like three things going through my head. VLAN 10. And that will put them all in VLAN 10. Now let me do interface range F09 through, I believe we had 17. 17, there we go, 9 through 17. So, interface range F, not G, F0, 9 through 17. And we're going to do the same thing, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 20. And then interface range F0, 18 through 24. And for this one, it's switch port mode, access, switch port access, VLAN 30. All right, now if I end out of here and I do a show run, you'll see what we've got here. F0, 1, 2, 3, they're all in VLAN 10. By the time we get to VLAN 9, or interface F09, we've switched to VLAN 20. We can also do show VLAN brief. And that will show us the only thing we have left in VLAN 1 are our 2 gigabit Ethernet ports. Instead, we've got, but we've got everything else moved into specific access VLANs. Now, that does it for this switch. Do a copy, run, start. Save my configuration. On my other switch, that's not done yet. Now, there's a technology we'll talk about later. Uh, VTP that will simplify this a little bit, but not completely. So basically now I have to replicate the same thing that I just did. So config T, VLAN 10, name, staff, VLAN 20, name, management, VLAN 30, name guest and that creates them and then I've got to apply switch or I've got to add switches switch ports the same way interface range F01 through 8 switch port mode access switch port access VLAN 10 interface range F09 through 17 there we go Switch port mode access, switch port access, VLAN 20. Interface range F018 through 24. Switch port mode access, switch port access, VLAN 30. Copy, run, start. Okay. Now, I've created my VLANs and I have um, I've created my VLANs and I've assigned access ports to my VLANs. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to start connecting devices. So, this is going to be in VLAN 1, so I have to plug it into a port that is associated with VLAN 1. So, I'm just going to go F01. This one's supposed to be, well, VLAN 10, not VLAN 1. This one's supposed to be in VLAN 20. So I need to associate it with a port that's in VLAN 20. So I'm going to plug it into F09. This one is in VLAN 30. So I am going to plug it into a port that's associated with VLAN 30. Let's do F018. And then I'll do the same thing here. VLAN 10 goes to a port in VLAN 10. VLAN 20 
needs to go to a port in VLAN 20, F09. I just stop and think there for a minute. And VLAN 30 needs to go to a port in VLAN 30, so we'll do F018. Okay, and then we'll fast forward time. Now at this point, none of these PCs can actually ping each other. Even though these three are connected to the same switch, they're in different VLANs, so they can't ping without going through a device that does inter-VLAN routing. Same thing over here. Now, these two PCs are in the same VLAN, but they can't ping each other either. And the reason they can't is because we need to configure a trunk line. Now, a trunk line connects two switches together. And what a trunk line does, when something goes out over a trunk line, it uses 802.1Q tagging. 802.1Q is the name of the protocol. And that we'll typically use for VLAN. There are a couple of others we'll do with it, but that's a pretty standard one. And it's one we need to remember because we're going to use it when we do inter VLAN routing. So we're going to do 802.1Q tagging. And what will happen is when something from, let's say, VLAN 10 comes to this switch, it will... Uh, if it's going to go across the trunk line, it will tag it and say, hey, this belongs to VLAN 10. It comes across to our next switch who reads that tagging on the trunk line, says this belongs to VLAN 10, and will send it out any port that's associated with VLAN 10. So how do we configure that trunk line? Big thing here, remember, we use trunk lines in order to communicate or to connect switches using multiple VLANs. So we're connected already using Gigabit Ethernet 01 between these two devices. So we're going to configure Gigabit Ethernet 01 as a trunk line. So we're going to do this. Um, config T. Uh, interface G01. Switch port mode trunk. And that will make it a trunk line. Now, there's one other thing that we really need to do here, and that is we need to set a uh, native VLAN. So, when things come across this trunk line, it's going to look for 802.1Q tagging because it's now set up as a trunk. Um, if it doesn't see an 802.1Q tag, it doesn't know what to do with it. And that's where that native VLAN comes in. What a native VLAN says is if something comes across this trunk port that's not, um, that's not tagged, treat it as belonging to this native VLAN. Now, the native VLAN is going to default to VLAN 1. We don't want to use VLAN 1 for security reasons because it's the default for everything. We want to isolate our traffic into different VLANs where we can control access to them a little bit better. So we need to create a default a native VLAN. So I'm going to configure a new VLAN here and I'm going to call it VLAN 99. And I'm going to name it native. And that's going to be my native VLAN. And then I'm going to go to interface G01. And I already did the switch port mode trunk. So my other command is switch port trunk native VLAN 99. Now that's just a shortened version of that. And now that's running the native VLAN. Now, one other thing that might be interesting, and that is we've talked before in other videos, ignore that by the way, we'll deal with that in a minute. We've talked in other videos about um, setting up an IP address to ping to or to telnet to a switch on. And so frequently what we'll do is we'll set up an admin or sometimes we'll call it a management uh, VLAN. Uh, and sometimes we'll do the management native on the same VLAN. So what we'll do is we'll set an interface on uh, an IP address in it on that interface. So this is what it would look like. We'd go to interface VLAN 99. Let's set an IP address, IP add 192.168.99. Dot, let's do 2. And we'd set a subnet mask and no shutdown. Now, here's the thing. We haven't assigned any interfaces to VLAN 99, so nobody can use it until we assign an interface to VLAN 99. Then somebody could plug into interface VLAN 99, and then they could tell that to that switch. 
We're going to ignore that at the moment because in a couple of subsequent videos, we're going to talk about doing interview and routing, which is another way of solving that issue. Now, in the meantime, let's talk about this thing that's popping up. Native VLAN mismatch discovered on Gigabit Ethernet 0199. It means basically we've on our trunk line on Gigabit Ethernet 01, we have a native VLAN set to 99, but we're connected with a switch named S2 on their Gigabit Ethernet 01, and they're using VLAN 1. This will keep popping up over and over and over and over and over until we get around to fixing it. So I'm going to end, copy, run, start, save our config. And then let's go to this switch and fix it. Now, this is already a trunk line. And it's a trunk line, remember, because we have that dynamic desire or that dynamic auto as our default setting. So when we told switch one be a trunk line for G01, it uh, sent a message using the DTP, the dynamic trunking protocol, over to uh, switch two and said, we're going to be a trunk line. And switch two is running dynamic auto as its default configuration, which is default for all ports on the Cisco switch. And so it says, okay, we'll be a trunk line. And it switches functional mode to trunk line. Now, I'm going to actually force it to trunk unconditionally. And I do this on most of my configurations. Some people don't, I do. So I'm going to go to config T interface G01 switch port mode trunk. Now I need to create my native VLAN here. So I'm going to type VLAN 99 and that's going to create my native VLAN. And I'm going to name it native. And then back in interface G01, let's try that again. Interface G01, 0, zero 1. There we go. Switch port trunk native VLAN 99. Now that will take care of my VLAN mismatch. And I won't get that particular message anymore. Now let's go ahead and set an IP address for this interface. So it's interface VLAN 99 IP address 192.168.99.3. And we'll make it a slash 24. Now remember my other switch. You don't always have to do the no shut and apparently today I can't. There we go. Um, I got in the habit of doing so, even though it says interface change state tap, I got in the habit of doing so, and it's sometimes hard for me to get out of that habit. So, um, if all is configured correctly now, I should be able to ping my other switch, 192.168.99.2. Okay, we had a couple of failures due to ARP. Switches take a little bit longer to respond to ARP, by the way. Um, so you tend to get two failures rather than one when you're doing it from a PC. And those little dots mean failed, failed, or timeout, timeout. And then the exclamation point, sometimes referred to as a bang, uh, is success. So we are pinging between PC or between our switches. Now let's hop out to our PCs and let's go to, let's start with PC, this PC down here in VLAN 3, just for the fun of it. I'm going to go to my command prompt and from my command prompt, I am going to ping 192.168.3.3.10. And that's my PC on the other side of my trunk line right here. And so I'm pinging across that trunk line just fine. I can't ping 2.10, which is this PC here, because we're in a different VLAN. And so I have to go through a router in order to be able to get to that VLAN. So that won't cross the trunk correctly. In fact, I can't even ping this device. I'm go ahead and stop you. You've made my point. I can't even ping this device even though we're on the same switch because we are in different VLANs. So our VLANs, our access ports, and our trunk lines are configured, set up, and working correctly. However, we don't have inner VLAN routing. There are actually three ways we can do this. Traditional, also called legacy inner VLAN routing, router on a stick, and layer 3 switching. But we're going to tackle each of those in subsequent videos.